What are some of the best snacks to have throughout your day to prevent hyperglycemic surges as well as hypoglycemic dips? Well, today we're gonna cover my top five snacks that are gonna keep both your blood sugar as well as your mood stable. Hi, I'm Jess, I'm a clinical nutritionist, and today we're talking about snacks. Who doesn't love snacks? I gotta admit that I'm actually more of a meal-oriented person, but from working with so many people over the years, I know just how important snacks are to you, not just because you love them, but because they can be very helpful for helping people prevent some hypoglycemic dips and make sure that their blood sugar stays stable throughout the day. What we want to avoid with snacks is foods that trigger hyperglycemia, which is essentially when there's gonna to be too much glucose or sugar in the blood. Both hypo and hyperglycemia are circumstances and physiological states that are likely not going to make us feel well, physically, mentally, and emotionally. So the five snacks that we're gonna go over today follow three essential rules. So if you find other snacks that fit into these rules, then they may be great other options for you as well. The three overarching rules for snacks are to one, do not eat carbohydrates alone, no naked carbohydrates. Two, the snack must contain protein and or fat, which goes hand in hand with not eating carbs alone. And the third is to avoid generally high sugar snack foods that happen sometimes even with health foods because there's lots of bars that contain a combination of nuts and seeds, but then also with dates, which is a really high glycemic food, or maybe they add like date syrup or other types of agave syrups and things like that to them, which make the food fairly high glycemic. So let's dive into the top five snack foods that I always like to have on hand. The number one snack food that I love are olives. Olives are mainly fat, particularly monounsaturated fats, and monounsaturated fats are great to consume for managing blood sugar. They are additionally a pretty filling snack, so you can just have a handful of them, get an adequate amount of calories, and feel pretty satiated. Olives normally also contain a pretty decent amount of salt in the forms that they come in, so as long as you're not someone with high blood pressure who is verifiably salt sensitive, this is actually another really great way to get a little bit of an energy boost through your day, similarly like you would with an electrolyte. And if you're thinking, aren't I gonna look weird walking around with a jar of olives? Well, olives actually come in these super cute snack packs now. And while these are from Trader Joe's, you can find these at other health food stores like Whole Foods. And if you don't have either one of those stores near you, you can also get several different brands like this online and at a store like Thrive Market, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, that is kind of like a online health food store warehouse where you can get a lot of these great items. My second favorite snack food on the list are actually meat sticks. And while yes, these are beef sticks, these come in several different um, types of meat. So there's like chicken, turkey, different things like that. So just like olives are purely fat, beef sticks are mainly protein and they may have a little bit of fat as well depending upon what type of meat sticks they are. I personally don't go many places without a beef stick and always keep one in my purse or in my car because you never know when you're gonna get stuck in some traffic and you don't want to get hangry. I also take beef sticks with me when I'm on something like a hike because although I'm likely going to have it with something like a bar that does contain a little bit of carbohydrates because I'm expending more energy, adding a beef stick to it will just give me more sustenance and prevent a hunger surge. Another great on-the-go snack are nuts and seeds, whether that is in Whole Foods form, that is in some kind of a cracker, like they make a lot of grain-free crackers out of nuts and seeds that have a lower glycemic impact. And then also things like bars, like I mentioned before. This bar is a nut and seed bar and it has a little bit of honey, about six grams, so the total sugar amount is under 10 grams. When you are having nut and seed bars 
with like dates, like I mentioned before, those are generally gonna have like 15 to 20 grams of sugar and then be on like the 20 to 30 gram range of carbs overall, which if you're, you know, doing something like a hike, like the example before, cool. But if not, I like to stick with under 10 grams of total sugars because then that might lead to one of those hyperglycemic spikes. If I'm on the go, maybe I'll do something like a bar. If I'm home, uh, one nut that I love to do is pistachios. That's one of my favorite nuts. But nuts in general are a great option for keeping your blood sugar stable because they're mainly fat, but they also contain a little bit of protein as well. So they're a great food on their own because of their macronutrient breakdown, but they're also a great companion food. So if for example, you wanna have a piece of fruit as a snack, then you can pair that piece of fruit with something like nuts, and then that's gonna help slow that release of sugar in your body. If you're enjoying the snack video so far, then please subscribe to the channel. It is the best no cost way to support the content that I create. The next two snacks on the list are snacks that you're probably more likely to have at home for a few reasons. The first one is gonna be some kind of a dip like, you know, guacamole or hummus, which I suppose you could take on the go too. But having something like this dip with some veggie sticks like carrots, or maybe even some of those, you know, nut and seed crackers or I also really love plantain chips as well because plantain chips contain some resistant starch. But the reason why hummus and or guacamole is such a good snack is because both of these contain fats that are gonna once again help slow that release of sugar in the blood. And then in addition to this, chickpeas also contain a little bit of protein as well. So if you're having some carrot sticks or some crackers with some hummus, then you're gonna be getting a pretty good macronutrient nutrient ratio that's gonna help keep your blood sugar stable for the rest of the day. My last snack that I saved for last, it's my absolute favorite, but often probably gonna be the thing that someone's gonna wanna eat the least, and that is oysters or canned oysters. And really any canned fish makes a great snack, but I specifically really like oysters for a few reasons. Oysters are a little bit of a superfood in general, but they're great for blood sugar stability because oysters is essentially the highest dietary source of zinc. Zinc is involved in the synthesis, storage, and release of insulin. So it plays a prominent role in glucose metabolism. Oysters are rich in other minerals and nutrients like vitamin D, copper, manganese, so they're just a really great way to get a nutrient punch throughout your day. If there are any other oyster fans here, then please leave a comment and let me know below. And if you want a one-stop shop for getting all of the products that I mentioned below, then please check out my link for Thrive Market. If you're not familiar with Thrive Market, they are essentially like an online Costco um, company, but they specifically specialize in health food. So a lot of the things that you're gonna find on there, you're gonna have to spend less time figuring out, is this something that is ultimately supportive and healthy for me to eat? And now they even even have products like meat and seafood and they've really expanded a lot. So if that's something that you're interested in, then please check that out. The link will be in the description. Just remember the three rules for snacks. Let's go over them again. Do not eat carbohydrates alone. Always have protein and or fat and avoid high glycemic foods that have these added or hidden sugars in them. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like and check out this video here if you haven't seen it already. That goes into a little bit more science on how blood sugar ultimately impacts our mood. So I will see you in that one.